I think it's really exciting right now if you're into technology or into iPhone applications because it's possible now not only to learn about coding and programming and learn the technical skills, but then you can also translate that into a real company and actually, it doesn't matter where you are in the world or how old you are, generate value from that. And actually, when I was kind of doing these applications, I, you know, as you said, I, I started when I was 12, informally just doing iPhone apps. But for a period of few years, I was just doing it in my summer holidays as a hobby or something that I just had an interest for. And I never saw how it could ever go from being just a hobby into something more than that. I mean, so much so that when I was at school, you know, I didn't even want to go study computer science at university. I just saw it as something you could do on the side. And it wasn't until I was 15 and did this application called Trim It and then got approached by these venture capitalists that I realized that actually when these VCs or these investors are looking to, to kind of invest in things, if you're young and you're kind of from another part of the world, that's actually an advantage to you. Because in their eyes, you're a unique person because you're what they call net native. So you've only grown up with the internet and technology, and so you're able to see loopholes and gaps to exploit that people who are a lot older or who have been in the industry for a lot longer or far more experienced would not necessarily be able to. And so I was surprised when I told the investors about my age that they were actually encouraged and still wanted to invest and help me do the company, which was really exciting for me because it demonstrates that I think there'll be a lot of other young people from all parts of the world because I was doing it out of London and we had a European team. Again, that's, that's not what usually you get in Silicon Valley when it comes to these tech companies. And actually, my investors were from Hong Kong and from Europe and other parts of the world. They weren't even from the US as well. So I think that's really cool because it demonstrates that with the App Store, with the fact that you can put an iPhone app on the store and hundreds of millions of people are your potential audience, that's really exciting. And so you know, I'm here to just basically raise awareness to the fact that if you do have an app idea, there's two things you can do. You can either teach yourself programming because it is accessible, it is available on the internet for free, and you can try to do the application yourself. And my advice would be to, to get your programming skills to a level where you can build a prototype or like a, a demo of the app ID you have. Do that. And then once you've done that, you can then raise, kind of raise awareness from venture capital, capitalists and get some people in your team. And the alternative to that is with maybe like a few thousand dollars or whatever, you could pay someone to do your idea. And so I would just encourage people who do have an app idea and they're like, oh, I, you know, I don't know what to do next, to literally just go and do it. Because worst case scenario is you learn something from it, trial and error, you maybe get the taste of it, don't want to do it in the, you know, again in the future. And best case scenario is obviously it does turn out to be something really exciting and it goes from there. So that would be kind of my advice is just to go out and do it. And especially with digital, it's very clear if it's going to succeed or fail. So you don't need to spend like years and years of time and progress trying to build the company and then realizing it's not going to work. You can just very quickly kill it off if it doesn't work. And if it does succeed, then throw resource on, resources onto that. So that's, that's basically my message. Thanks. Thank you.